Hi, I'm Adam. Thanks for watching Real Home Recording. The information I'm going to give you in this video is something that you would typically get at a multi hundred dollar seminar or class. And it's information that typically isn't free, freely given on YouTube, but for Real Home Recording uh, viewers and fans and Twitter followers, I have no problem giving you this information because I think it's essential to the engineering process and it's something that a lot of people are just ignorant of. I was ignorant of it when I first started and it wasn't until a few years ago, maybe about five or six years ago, where I got it. And it's information that is vital and it's something that you, you know, setting recording levels, that's simple. Like, what? Like, why are you even going on about this, Adam? Well, let me show you this. These are three tracks. Track one is a rock track from the 80s. Track two is a rock track from the 90s. And track three is a rock track from 2007. And uh, well, the reason I'm showing you this is if you look at track three, the waveforms are flat. They are maximized on the scale. And uh, track one, has a lot, le a lot more room. You can see a lot more gaps in the waveform. And the reason this is essential is <coughs> when most people load up or rip a CD or they, they see a mastered track, they see this. And they don't see the tapes or the digital files that the mix engineer used. What you would see is something like this. This is a song that I recorded and uh, you'll notice that the tracks on the scale look very small. But in actuality, this is proper audio recording levels. So where do you set these at? The answer is not so simple. I'm gonna try to give you a technical explanation but something that makes sense. Back in the analog age, zero was zero, but zero also had a reference of plus four dBU, which was typical for pro professional gear in America. I think in other countries it's slightly different, but regardless, line level is what it's called. Analog zero is line level. When digital came out, the smart engineers put analog zero at digital approximately negative 18 dB full scale. What that means to you is, <coughs> when recording, you don't record at digital zero, or almost at digital zero, you have to record much lower. And on a waveform view, it looks tiny, but in actuality, it's not. As long as you have the proper gear to handle it, and, and by that I mean powered speakers or powered headphones, some kind of, something that, where you can hear these levels okay, you should be fine. Um, however, if you do record loud, It'll, it'll tend to sound a little thin. It'll be harder to mix. You'll never get the full t potential of your tracks. And on top of that, you'll run out of headroom while mixing much quicker. <coughs> What's headroom? Headroom is basically the amount of signal that you have between nominal level or line level, which is approximately between, depending on your gear, is between negative 22 decibels and negative 12 decibels, full scale. I just set it at negative 18 because it's, it's approximately where it'll be when I'm recording this to, to my video camera right now and every single voiceover track that you've heard on Real Home Recording has been done with these concepts in mind. Um, analog zero again is digital negative 18 approximately. Of course, you know, you don't, you can't, you don't just restrict yourself to that, but it, so it's, it, it hovers between negative 20 and negative 12 <coughs> peaks. So, if you follow my advice, you will have much better sounding records and, uh, and tracks and whatever else you record. And uh, you just wait until mixing and mastering to bring that level up to a competitive stage. Not when you're recording, when you're mixing and mastering. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com. I will see you next time.